welcome back to my series on changing this Bible into what I'm calling my prayer Bible or my war binder or my war room. And in previous videos, I've gone through different parts in the Bible, like how I incorporated scripture into praying for other using these tabs and these tabs, going on a prayer walk through my Bible, through this great controversy that we're all in. So we recognize our need for prayer and then recognizing who God is in these tabs so that we can enter into his gates with thanksgiving for who he is and what he's done for us. And I showed in the very last video how I chose some specific prayers to lead me through that into praying for myself and then praying for others. And now in this video, I'm going to show you these purple tabs. And I believe all of these purple tabs are Bible verses that I turned into prayer. So let me go to the first one and give you an example of this. So this one is based off Exodus 34 verses 5 and 6. And if you notice, I have this red tab here because 34 verses 5 through 6 are God proclaiming his name, which turns out to be his character and actually that would be verses 5 through 7 and so because we know that we're gonna have his name on our forehead we're gonna be sealed into the truth of who God is and the sealing process is being settled into the truth of who we are in God I turned this into a prayer and I took it and I just for some reason chose these pictures I don't know why and I did some different colored font and I wrote Lord seal your name on our forehead cause us to be merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. And the reason I wrote it this way is because we aren't able to be these things. The only true way to be those things, like maybe you can fake it for a little bit, but the only way we can do those things is that God causes it to happen. For us to come face to face with our own wickedness and to ask God to change us, he's the only one that can do it. So that's the first one. And then I flip back to this next tab and it's based on number six verses 24 through 27. And I'll just read this one just to show you how I'm doing it. This one's a simple one. And it says that the Lord said to Moses to say these things, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. So I turn that one into a prayer. This is just a random picture that I found and I just separated and put it in between with some colored fonts. And it says, oh Lord, bless us and keep us. Oh Lord, make your face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. O oh Lord, lift up your countenance upon us and give us peace. O oh Lord, write your name upon us as your children and bless us. Now, one thing you'll notice as I'm doing this is that I don't say, O oh Lord, bless me and keep me. And we can definitely do that. But what I decided in this is that I wanted to make it a corporate prayer. Similarly, in Daniel 9, he prayed for all of the nation that, you know, all of them have turned aside. And I can't remember how it all goes, but he prayed for everybody and I know that everyone needs prayer so I'm just praying that corporately instead of just for myself so this next one is based on first Chronicles 4 verse 10 which is a very familiar one and I just added some pictures again on this one and it says O God of Israel oh that thou would bless us indeed and enlarge our territory that thine hand might be with us and that thou would keep us from evil that it may not grieve us and we may not cause pain and God grants that which is requested and that's part of that verse that he granted what was requested and the other thing about this you might notice is it says that it may not grieve us that we may not cause pain this was based on two different translations and I like them both so I just stuck them together in there and so that's the nice thing of this so as I'm going through I'm praying actual scripture so then this next one is Psalm 51 on this side, I just took this and put it here. And anywhere where David said, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean, I just changed it. So it would say, purge us with hyssop and have mercy upon us, O God. David, at this time, he was calling out for forgiveness for his sin with Bathsheba. But we've all done things that lead us from God. And so I just change it from me to us. And then on this side, I found some pictures from, this is all Psalm 51. So I could read either one. These are the exact verses. So this next one is Psalm 119, and this was just a picture that I found online, verses 9 and 11. And then what I did was I took a lot of the verses of Psalm 119, and I just arranged it into a corporate prayer. And on this side, you'll notice that some of the verses are switched around, like I might go from 
verse 37 to verse 36, then to verse 31, and then 104. And that's just because I was trying to put all the sins together. And then what God does for us, what he, how he can lead us through it. So I'll read that to you. And of course, you don't have to do it this way, but this is just an example of a way that you could turn it in to a prayer. So what I wrote is, Oh Lord, cause us to walk in the law of the Lord, that we will be blessed as the undefiled in the way. And actually, I'm going to break in on myself because I know that might be an odd concept to say walk in the law of the Lord. Like, what are you talking about? But just remember in Hebrews and a lot of other places, God talks about that he's going to write the law on our heart. Now, this isn't the Mosaic laws with a sacrificial system. That's been done away with, with Christ on the cross. But the Ten Commandments that say, you shall have no other God before me, don't take the name of the Lord in vain, don't steal, don't murder, all those kind of things, that's the very character of God. And I think most people know just because you are a follower of Christ does not mean that you can now lie and steal and do all of those things. You don't want to have more than one God. We just have God. So that's what I'm talking about here when I say, oh Lord, cause us to walk in the law of the Lord, that we will be blessed as the undefiled in the way. Oh Lord, bless us to be those who keep your testimonies and seek you with our whole heart. Cause us to walk in your ways and do no iniquity. Cause us to keep thy precepts diligently as thou hast commanded. Direct our ways to keep thy statute. Cause us to have respect unto all thy commandments so that we shall not be ashamed. Teach us thy righteous judgment so that we will praise thee with uprightness of heart. Lord, cause us to keep thy statutes. O oh, forsake us not, we are entirely dependent on you. Lord, cleanse our way and cause us to take heed thereto according to thy word. O oh, let us not wander from thy commandments, but instead cause us to, with our whole heart, seek thee. Grant to us an ease of ability to hide thy words in our hearts, so that we might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach us thy statutes. Hide your words in our hearts, so that we meditate on those words and those words only. Make it so loud in our hearts and minds that we cannot not sin against thee. Cause us to live and keep thy words and see how wondrous your word is. And so that verse, verse 12, I added into it just personally. I want to have it so loud in my heart, the true way to walk with God, that I don't even think about going a different way, that I love the way of the Lord. So that's why I wrote it that way. So you can play around with scripture as long as it's lining up with who God is and his word. This isn't me saying this is a new translation of the Bible. That would be wrong. This is just me praying the scriptures back. And remember, it's right here next to Psalm 119. So I always have the option to read the real word of God. This is just an insert. So then on the other side, I continued. And in this one, I really mixed up some verses together. So here it is zoomed in a little bit better. Maybe you'll be able to see it starting in verse 27. Make us to understand the way of thy precepts so that we will talk of thy wondrous works. In the times our soul melt for heaviness strengthen us according unto thy word remove from us the way of lying turn away our eyes from beholding vanity and our hearts from covetousness let there be no hidden thing in us left that you have not cleansed grant us thy law graciously incline our heart and cause us to cling to thy testimonies o lord put us not to shame through thy precepts we get understanding Thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Quicken us in thy way. Cause us to choose the way of truth and lay thy judgments before us. Enlarge our hearts so that we run the way of thy commandments. O Lord, put your law into our heart. Write them in our minds. Teach us, O Lord, the way of thy statutes so we keep it unto the end. Give us a full understanding of thy ways and laws so that we observe them with our whole hearts. Make us to go in the path of thy commandments. Make them our delight. Establish us in thy word so that we are called by thy name as ones who are devoted to honoring you. Let thy mercies come also unto us, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So this one is Ecclesiastes 12, verses 12 through 14. And actually, if you notice, it has a tab down here for this path that we're on. And then it also has this one, so I can hit it at various parts, and I can also hit it right from the Bible, whatever I'm feeling on that day. That's what I do. And I should say, since I just said that, that I don't do this every day. I love these tabs that are at the top when I'm feeling down, when I'm having a hard time. This one right now, this piece is really helping me as far as if I'm feeling overwhelmed, knowing that God is going to fight the battle, all those kind of things. I really like that one. He goes before us. All those kind of verses are coming to my mind. So I highly recommend doing this to your Bible. But anyway, so here's Ecclesiastes 12. And so with this one, I won't read it. 
just because it is the same words, I just added a text box and put this in different writing. This one is Isaiah 11 verses 2, 3, and 5. And this was actually a prophecy of Jesus. But all the things that Jesus had, we can pray for ourselves to have. God wants us to look just like him. And we can't do that in our own power. So we're asking for him to help us, for him to change us. Such a beautiful thing that he does. So I'll just read to you what I wrote. Oh Lord, we pray that the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon us. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So there's that perfect number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. God likes seven. So these actually are those seven spirits of God that it talks about in Revelation. Then verse three, O Lord, make us of quick understanding the fear of the Lord and not judge after the sight of our eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of our ears. And wow, that would be a wonderful thing for, for me at least to really take hold of. O oh Lord, make righteousness to be the girdle of our loins and faithfulness the girdle of our reign. And so this one is Jeremiah 29 and it's verses 11 through 14. And I kind of added some words before it. So I just put the verse numbers after it. And I'm just going to read this just to show you in the actual verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So then I wrote, thank you, Lord, that you promised that the thoughts that you think toward us are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end. So I'm just reminding myself of who God says that he is. Thank you, Lord, that when we call upon you and we go and pray unto you, that you hear us. Lord, cause us to search for you with our whole heart. Cause us to seek you and find you. Lord, turn away our captivity and gather us to live with you always. So this is one of my favorite parts of scripture, Ezekiel 36. And I added in that verse that we did before from First Chronicles 4.10, and it goes on both sides. And I'm gonna read it to you. I'll just show you an example like verse 28 here. So verse 28 actually says, and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. And so in that I said, make us to be your people and be our God. So just to let you know, I made some changes to this and turned it into a prayer. So I'll read this to you. O Lord, keep us from profaning your holy name in small or large ways. Sanctify your great name in us. Cause the unbelievers to know that you are the Lord by sanctifying yourself in us before their eyes. Gather us from among the heathen and bring us into our own land. And this is that new Jerusalem. Sprinkle clean water upon us and make us clean. Cleanse us from all our filthiness and from all our idols. Cleanse us. And those idols can be TV, alcohol, anything that's coming between you and God. And I'm speaking to myself too about that. God is the only thing good. Put into us the new heart and the new spirit. Take away the stony heart out of our flesh and give to us an heart of flesh. Put your spirit within us and cause us to walk in your statutes and keep your judgments and do them. Make us to be your people and be our God. Save us from all our uncleanness and call us to goodness and increase in us this goodness and lay no famine upon us. Multiply the fruits within us and increase our field that we shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Oh, that thou would bless us indeed and enlarge our territory. O oh, Lord, keep thine hand from us and keep us from evil that it may not grieve us, that we may not cause pain. And you, God, grant that which is requested. And on here it starts verse 31. Cause us to know fully our evil ways and our doings that are not good. Cause us to loathe ourselves in our own sight for our iniquities and for our abominations. Do this all for your name's sake. Okay, so I love this verse. For one thing, because we don't deserve it, but God will be glorified through this process. That controversy that is happening with Satan, which is this part of my Bible here. Satan has said, God, you're not any good. You're expecting too much. We should just get to live how we please, which means since God's government is one of love, it's everything but love. And so to live truly him, we're going to be glorifying his name. And I really don't want to be comfortable with who I am. I want to loathe myself, not in a I might as well give up way because that's sinful, but in a way of just take all of this from me. This is no good. Take it, Lord. And he's going to give us back something even better than what we had. Cleanse us from all our iniquities and cause our desolation to be tilled and to become like the Garden of Eden, that the unbelievers may know that you are the Lord. You are the Lord. You have spoken it and you will do it. Wait no longer, Lord. We inquire of you to do this for us. Increase our numbers like a holy flock that all shall know that you are God. 
you are the Lord. And this is Ezekiel 37 verse 4. Lord, say unto our dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Lord, cause breath to enter into us and cause us to live and we shall know that you are the Lord and we shall live and know that you are the Lord. O Lord God, say unto our breathless bodies, come from the four winds. O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live and stand us up upon our feet an exceeding great army. Put your spirit in us that we may live and know you. You, Lord, speak it. Remember, his words do not come back to him void. You, Lord, speak it. You, Lord, perform it. We do nothing of our own selves. Cause us to know it fully and to believe. Amen. Because anything of us thinking we're going to do it, that we're doing anything good, that's self-righteousness. And we want to fully understand how much it's all God. So that we don't start getting prideful like we did anything to change ourselves. This is God doing it all. And it will keep us safe from that pride. That is another sin and that's the original sin of, of Satan. His heart changed. So a very important thing to remember. And I think this one is exactly the same. I think I just added in some colors. But I'll go ahead and read it. Verses 1 through 3. Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us, and the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. So the former rain was what happened at Pentecost, and there's going to be a latter rain. A great light is going to go out to the whole world, it says in Revelation. And we're going to start with this former rain because we're in the Laodicean church. We're asleep. We don't realize how deep our need is for God. And we think we're doing all this stuff for ourselves. So we need to come more and more in this awareness that we are filthy rags. And then we'll be ready for the former rain and then the latter rain. And we're not safe to receive the latter rain until we've received those former rains. Now, these are two prayers I showed in another video. And it's just some little write-ups about it. But it says, Take me, O Lord, as holy thine. I lay all my plans at thy feet. Use me today in thy service. Abide with me and let all my work be wrought in thee. Lord, take my heart, for I cannot give it. It is thy property. Keep it pure, for I cannot keep it for thee. Save me in spite of myself, my weak, unchristlike self. Mold me, fashion me, raise me into a pure and holy atmosphere where the rich current of thy love can flow through my soul. And up here, Psalm 119, verse 32, O Lord, enlarge my heart. And this is Hebrews 10, 16 and Jeremiah 31, 33. O Lord, put your laws into our hearts. Write them in our minds. Cause our sins and iniquities to be remembered no more. Now, this is just a random prayer that I saw online. My printer was broken, but it kind of looks cool. kind of looks like the sunset. It was by the, someone named Kenny Luck. I don't know anything about that person. I just saw the prayer. I put it in next to Acts 2, the day of Pentecost. And I'll just read it to you. Um, Lord, I pray you would move the Spirit more boldly in my life. I know that any sin can grieve and diminish the voice of the Spirit. And I pray against the temptation to sin. Help me crave your presence more than I crave sin. Help me grow in the fruit of the Spirit and so walk closer with yourself. I pray for guidance from your Spirit. Let your will and promises always be a meditation of my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. So the actual one doesn't have these stripes in it. <laughs> but I was impatient to make this, so I just printed, even though I didn't have a pr good printer at the time. So this next one is Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And that is, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such thing there is no law and then i found this online and i just altered the font and so with love first john 4 7 beloved let us love one another for love is of god and everyone that loveth is born of god and knoweth god and so it goes through and there's a verse for each one and i think most of these i think someone else put verses together and then i think i switched out some of the verses because i like them better i'm not sure but if you want a copy of this, let me know. I'll just save time from reading it all just because I know when videos get long, it's hard to watch the whole thing. So if you want this, let me know. But it just goes through all of them and you can just dwell more. And also, of course, it's up here, these. And unfortunately, these colors don't match because I didn't do this at the same time. And like long suffering, which is the same word as patience. And I think temperance I put in with long suffering. I can't remember. And so it got combined but um, I'm still working through all the kinks of that so in this one I didn't write anything up for it so it's just Ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 through 19 
And this was actually a prayer that Paul said. So this is verse 17 through 19. So it would be nice to add an insert, but anywhere that I see the word you, I'm going to say us. So Lord, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward or toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. And then it goes on about Christ. And then up here I have Jeremiah 9, 24. Cause us to glory in this, that we understand and know you, that you are the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things you delight, O Lord. So this next one is based on Ephesians 3, verses 9 through 21. And just to show you, this is just a simple little change, like it says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And so I changed that to, O oh Lord, make all of us see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purposes which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him wherefore we desire that we faint not at tribulations which is your glory so like this verse here in verse 13 wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you which is your glory and so I just made that something that all of us can identify with so it's just really personalizing the scriptures and some people might not feel this is okay but I just feel like there's power in it so and then verse 14 for this cause so all of this, we bow our knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant us, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith, that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that we might be filled with all the fullness of God, now unto him that is able to exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And again, I love that. According to the power that worketh in us, it's none of our doing. It's all God. It's all Christ. It's all the Holy Spirit. So this one is based on the armor of God. And I found two different things related to this, and I really like them, and I just put them together. So the first one I found very interesting because it took a verse that was related to each of the armor of God and put it together. So I put that on this side, and then this was a kid's prayer based on the armor of God, and she had drawn, I'm assuming she had drawn these pictures to go with it, so I just put it all together. So I'll go ahead and read that one, and this is also in this part of the path, so you can hit it either way. This prayer Bible, I don't follow a certain routine, it's just whatever I feel I need in the moment. And so I just want to say, I do this in several different ways. I might just read through this. I might read through this and then this. And I also might read this and do a prayer. Read this and then do a prayer. And I think that's the way I'm going to do it today. But it's really kind of a free-for-all what you want to do if you even want to do this. So this here reminds us of why we put on the whole armor of God. And this is just the exact verse. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. So Proverbs 23, 23 says, Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. So this is what we want. We want our loins girded about with truth. And then we can pray, Jesus, put on us the belt of truth. Help us love the truth, love to tell the truth and hear the truth. Lord, make us more like you. Let the truth keep us from lies and mistakes. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So I want that breastplate of righteousness. Jesus put on us the breastplate of righteousness. 
Please, Lord, guard our hearts. Make everything that comes in or out of our hearts be good to you. Cause our hearts to be open to you and easily led by the Holy Spirit. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Romans 10, 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Jesus, put on us the gospel of peace shoes. Everywhere we go, Lord, help us bring peace. Help us be peaceful. Guide what we do and where we go. Prepare us to tell other people about you. Prepare those we meet to hear your word. Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Hebrews 11.1 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Jesus, put on us the shield of faith. Lord, build a strong faith in us. With faith, all things are possible. Protect us from any attacks from the enemy. And take the helmet of salvation. Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Jesus, put on us the helmet of salvation. Please protect our minds from bad thoughts and help us focus on things that are good. Lord, please protect our eyes and keep them looking up to you. And the last one, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing through to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thought and intents of the heart. Jesus, put on us the sword of the Spirit. Put your words in our hearts. Lord, lead us and guide us so that we do all that you cause us to do. Let your spirit and your words change our character. Give us boldness and knowledge to love and defend others. Amen. So in the last video, I was showing this walking through of this section of my Bible with prayers and praying, God, I confess my sin. And then I would go and I would pray for others. And then I was liking praying the armor of God prayer. So I actually would like to add a blue tab here, this turquoisey blue, so it lines up. So then I know when I complete that section, I can pray for others and these up here. And then I can pray the armor of God over all of us. So I'm realizing I just need to add a tab here so it makes it easier to find this. This is another one based on Ephesians 6 verses 18 through 20. And it was just the plain type. And then my daughter decided that she would really like to decorate. So she did that in her own little way. So that might be a little bit busy, but I love the fact that she did that for me. So it says, Lord, please help us to pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and we pray that utterance may be given to us that we may open our mouths boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which we are an ambassador in chains that in it we may speak boldly as we ought to speak now when I was putting this one together I wrestled with it because this is Paul asking them to pray for him and he actually was in chains for the gospel so that was a very specific thing to his situation But really, if you think about it, we're all trapped here on earth. We're an ambassador. And this world that we're in is one of darkness and evil. So I feel like we're chained by that. And when we get to heaven, for that thousand years in heaven, there's going to be such freedom. So I do feel like an ambassador in chains. So that's why I left it in there. And I I just turned his prayer into a prayer for all of us. So this one is Philippians 4 verse 8. And I just took that one and I added some colored and the yellow wasn't quite dark enough. So I used a yellow pen and wrote over it. And so finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest. So I could have turned this into a prayer. I kind of wish I had. Lord, cause us to think on those things which are true and honest. So I could have done that. But when I'm in that moment, I can pray. I can ask the Holy Spirit to lead me to think more on these things. I can confess to him, Lord, I haven't been thinking things that are true or or lovely or good report. I've been talking about things that are negative. Lord, help me, lead me in this so you can turn this into more of a prayer. And I can always add another sheet with dwelling on that truth. So there's always room to grow in this. And this one is Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 through 14. So now if we go to verse 9 over here, it says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So that's just an example of the original. So I changed it to say, Lord, I pray and desire that we be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Lord, please make us walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of you, God, and strengthened with all might according to your glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, 
Thank you, Father, for making us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Thank you that you have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of your dear Son. Thank you that in him we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. And then on the other side, I have Colossians 3, verses 12 through 16, and that's this. But then up here I wrote, Lord, please do this for us, what I'm about to read. And where we are not willing, please make us willing. We are wretched. You are our only hope. So those were completely my words based on other parts of the Bible. I just kind of worked it in there. Please, Lord, make us the elect of God, holy and beloved. Give us bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. Cause us to forbear with one another and to forgive one another. And if we ever have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave us, cause us to forgive in like manner. Above all these things, we ask that you put on us charity, which is the bond of perfectness. In this case, the word charity means love and cause the peace of God to rule in our hearts and to be thankful cause your word to dwell in each of us richly with all wisdom remind us of your teachings and encourage us with your psalms and hymns and spiritual songs remind us to sing with grace in our hearts to the Lord and this one is Colossians 4 verses 2 through 6 and this is another one where I just added oh Lord cause us so I turned it into a prayer O oh Lord, cause us to continue in prayer and watch in prayer with thanksgiving. O oh Lord, give us a spirit of thanksgiving no matter what happens. O oh Lord, open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which we are in bonds, that we may make it manifest as we ought to speak, and to walk always in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. O oh Lord, cause our speech to always be filled with grace, seasoned with salt, that we may know how we ought to answer every man. So this is First Thessalonians chapter 5 and it's verse 4 through 28 and again I just added a little to it changed it O oh Lord let us not walk in darkness that the day should overtake us as a thief O oh Lord make us children of light and the children of the day not of night nor of darkness Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Cause us to watch and be sober. O Lord, cause us who are of the day to be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. O Lord, cause us to comfort ourselves together and edify one another. O Lord, show us them which labor among us and are over us in the Lord. Help us to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among ourselves. O Lord, cause us to warn them that are unruly, Comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and be patient toward all men. O Lord, keep us from rendering evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among ourselves and to all men. O Lord, cause us to all be in you and you in us, and because we are in you, cause us to rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, give thanks in everything, quench not the spirit, despise not the prophecies which are from you, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. God of peace, sanctify us wholly. Lord, preserve our whole spirit and soul and body unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calls us, and he will do it. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. So this is a prayer that I randomly found online, and I didn't write down who it was by, unfortunately. And then my daughter decorated it for me. And it says, God, help me love the life I live right now. Show me the good things I often overlook, and help me be content with what I have. Forgive me when I compare myself to others. Forgive me for longing for things outside of you and your kingdom. Thank you for loving me right where I am, right as I am. Help me keep my eyes on you. In Jesus' name, amen. This one is 1 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 13. And I added, Please, Lord, gird up the loins of our mind. Cause us to be sober. Cause us to have a right understanding of Jesus so that the grace you give us gives us a saving hope. Cause us to remember that the ways that we had previously fashioned for ourselves were out of ignorance, and that those ways cannot, should not, will not be continued. Let us no longer be ignorant. Those ways which seemed right unto a man lead to death. Lord, lead us to life everlasting. Make us holy as you are holy. Don't allow us to settle. Make our full life and conversation be holy as you are holy. Strengthen us from this moment forward to no longer minimize sin. Cause us to seek you to change us to your level of holiness. Let us never think it's good enough. It's not that bad. 
cause us every moment to seek you to bring us to your level of holiness. You in us, the hope of glory, plant in our mind that you, Lord, do not have favorites. We are all under the same inspections. Lord, I beg you to give unto us the correct awe and respect for you so that we honor you every moment. There is no moment where we are not with you. While it is still day, give us this passion, your ways only. Cause us to fully realize that we are God's temple, that you inhabit us through your Holy Spirit. Remind us you do not want to watch that, see that, think that, eat that. Do not allow us to think anything less than your best is okay. Word of God only shout in our ears, this is the way, walk in it. So a lot of this was added in just a feeling of I don't want to walk the way of the world, I want to walk the way of God. And then this is based on 1 Peter chapter 3, it starts in verse 8. Lord, cause us to be of one mind, your mind, Lord, cause us to have compassion for each other and to love as brethren. Lord, cause us to be pitiful and to be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrawise blessing. Cause us to know our calling and to fully understand the blessing that we shall inherit. This world is nothing compared to that which you have in store for those who love you. Lord, cause us to understand that our only hope to see the good days of your promised eternal life is in allowing you to refrain our tongues from evil. Please keep our lips from speaking guile. Cause us to eschew evil, to do good, to seek peace, and to pursue peace. So that's the last one of those purple tabs that I have. And as you can probably tell, it's not that I read through everything in my Bible, everything that's marked, it would just be hours and hours, but it's there to just kind of turn my eyes to Jesus. And so these purple tabs are about me turning my focus on God and how much he does for us. Mm-hmm.